Hey lighting people, today we're going to talk about the different kinds of settings you can have for your sequences and what they all do. So there are multiple ways that you can get into your sequence settings. One way is by right clicking a sequence and clicking settings up here. Or if the sequence is selected, going to your sequence sheet and clicking settings, it brings it up as a pop up in that case. Another way, if you have it assigned to an executor and you're on that screen is you can click on it on the executor and select edit setting over here and that will bring them all up as well. Now in your settings there is obviously something which happens as a default whenever you first store a sequence. When you store a sequence it uses the default settings. Now you can edit the default settings by going to preferences and timing sequences and then you have this here as well. Anything you change here will change the default. We're missing a few here. You can't set a default name or um, scribble or appearance or things like that. But the bottom line is these are the defaults that you can change that you can use for whenever you store a new sequence. You can also, when editing a sequence, click save as default after making whatever changes and you can reload the default if you've changed something and want to return to it. Now in this sequence settings menu, we have several different sections. We have label, start, playback, speed, protect, and it might be. And this just gives us a little bit of a visual organization so that we can more easily find the things we're looking for. I'm going to go through these sections one at a time. So we'll start over here on the left with label. This contains settings like the name, which you can just click and change. This is the name of the sequence that will display wherever you have the sequence. Uh, the scribble, you can assign a scribble that you've created or make a new one right here. The appearance is going to be the same kind of thing, a pop-up where you can select one or create one. Tags, I guess, doesn't entirely belong in label, but it lets you assign tags and unassign tags. And in the note, you can change the note for the sequence. This setting, prefer queue appearance is going to determine if your sequence has an uh, has an appearance assigned to the sequence and to cues individually or even if the sequence appearance is none or the queue appearance is none if you turn on prefer queue appearance then the executor is going to show the queue appearance when the queue is active if no queue is active, then it will be showing the sequence appearance. And I think if your queues don't have any appearances, then also it will use the sequence appearance. The executor display mode determines if your executor display will be showing only uh, the queue data, like one queue right here, it's showing the number and name of the queue, or if it's only going to show the appearance or if it's going to show both. Moving on to the start section. The start section has to do with what makes your sequence start or stop playback and how that works. So these three settings right here, auto start, auto stop, and master go mode specifically have to do with when you have a master fader assigned and you're using that fader. When auto start is enabled, pulling the sequence master up from zero will fire a command for the sequence depending on this setting right here, master go mode. It'll either, apparently you can set it to none. I thought the master was usually go, um, but you can have it go, you can have it simply turn on, or you can have it return to the top of the sequence as well. So then with this off, pulling the master up from zero does not start the sequence in any way. Auto stop determines if the sequence turns off when your fader comes to zero or not. Auto fix means that if the sequence is playing back, it will automatically be fixed on all pages. Whereas with auto fix off, it only is fixed if you fix it. And of course, if you turn auto fix on and you play it back and then you turn it off, it auto unfixes as well. Q zero mode actually determines whether or not Q0 does anything. Now we have Q0 built into our sequences, whether we like it or not, you can't delete it, it's kind of always there. But normally it doesn't do anything. And you can even see, I'll go ahead and select this sequence so that we can see what we're talking about. 
Um, you can even see it's grayed out because it doesn't have any data in it. Now, whenever you turn Q0 mode to something other than off, it actually stores data in Q0. You can choose all used attributes or only use dimmers. And it just stores the default data for those attributes into the Q0 of that sequence. You can adjust the fade times and stuff for Q0, but what that means is you hit go plus and it will immediately put everything using the fade time at the Q0 settings before fading into everything else. I mean, it'll simultaneously, you can't go to Q0, so it'll be fading into your first Q whenever you hit a go on the sequence or whatever the case might be. But it basically positions all the lights at that Q0 position as well. When auto stomp is enabled, playing back a Q in this sequence that contains absolute values specifically will stomp phasers coming from other sequences that are using the same attribute. Under the playback section, we have settings that pertain to the playback of the queue. Tracking being off means that anything you store in one queue will not actually stick around to the next queue. So most of the time you want this on, but if for some reason you don't want anything in your queues to track forward, you can turn this off and then you have to store all the data you want specifically in each queue. Wraparound makes it so that when you are on the last queue in a sequence and you hit go plus, it returns to the first queue. If this is disabled and you're on the last queue and you just hit go plus, nothing will happen. Release first queue corresponds to the wraparound setting and actually kind of doesn't make a ton of sense to have this on with wraparound off. With release first queue being off and wraparound on, values from the last queue can track back to the first queue, which could be a good thing for smooth fades or it could be a bad thing if you don't want that data being tracked. So you can turn on release first queue and it releases values that are not stored in the first queue. Restart mode determines what queue a sequence restarts to if you had it on and you turned it off and then you turn it on again. So if I have three queues and this is set to first queue, I'm on the first queue or I'm on the second queue or I'm on the third queue, it doesn't matter. I turn the sequence off and then I turn the sequence on again. It's going to use the first queue um, every time that you restart the sequence. If it's set to current queue, then whatever queue you were on when you turned it off will be the one that restarts when you turn it on. And next queue will go to the next queue after the one you were on when you turned it off. Q command set to enabled means that you can enable or disable individual command lines in the sequence. If you set it to force no, then you can't enable Q commands. They will always be disabled. And force yes means that you cannot disable command lines. They will always be enabled. X fade or crossfade reload affects how your crossfader works. So typically if you have a crossfader assigned to a sequence, and you move the fader up from zero, once it gets to 100, moving it back down will start to fade into the next queue. With crossfade reload turned on, moving it up from zero fades to the next queue, but then moving it back down doesn't do anything. When you get back to zero, then it's reloaded and moving it up again will fade the next queue again. This way, basically, you're always going to the next queue by moving the fader upwards. The output filter lets you define a filter to use to filter the output of the sequence. So when you play back cues, it'll only output values that are allowed through the filter, even though everything still exists in the sequence that you have stored there, it simply won't output. Priority is a little bit of a discussion. So we have this long list of eight different priorities that you can have, and the standard kind of default is LTP, which stands for latest takes precedence. Now, most of these do function in a latest takes precedence fashion, but if something is set to a lower priority, then it actually still has lower precedence than the, whatever is latest. So if it's set to lowest, for example, and you have an LTP, but then you play back the lowest after, even though the lowest is the latest, it's not going to be taking precedence over this one because this one's a higher priority. 
in the same way high is higher than LTP. And generally, that is the standard. HTP is a little bit different because HTP stands for highest takes precedence. I know you would think highest, lowest, but it's highest and latest. So highest is basically just the highest dimmer value. So all the other ones are LTP, but highest takes precedence means that if it has a higher dimmer value, that dimmer value will be used. Soft LTP determines how fixtures transition when another sequence takes priority based on LTP, specifically only when that sequence is being activated by moving the fader master. So if you have one sequence that's on and another sequence is off and you turn it on by moving the master from zero, you can have it suddenly snap to the master value. Whereas if soft LTP is on, then it basically uses the master fader as a cross fader for that value change transition. Playback master lets you assign a sequence to one of these 50 playback masters. You can also label these individually and in other places. And that way you can use one master to control multiple sequences, kind of like a group master or any type of master, but it's a playback master referring to specific sequences. Crossfade mode lets you determine if your crossfaders, when you use AB crossfade, are using AB mode or split mode. AB causes the crossfaders to work for increasing and decreasing values. So A fades in increasing values and B fades out decreasing values or however you are using them. Split makes it so that the crossfaders function as masters for the current and next queue. So you can change the master levels of the current and next queue as you're going between them. Object action is something I touched on in my last video pretty heavily, so you could go back and watch that one if you would like to know more. But the object action is only used if the pool is set to use the individual object actions. And it usually defaults to pool default, but if you change it to anything else, then that action will be used when you click on that sequence in the sequence pool if the sequence pool is set to allow you to use individual object actions. Under the speed section, we have only a few things. We have rate master, rate scale, speed master, and speed scale. And these let you assign speed masters as rate masters or speed masters. And those just let you control the speed of the phasers in the sequence based on those masters. And you can also set these rate and speed scales to multiply or divide so that you can have this sequence be faster or slower than other sequences by the same speed master. Speed from rate lets you determine the speed by a rate master. The protect section refers to things that um, uh, limiting basically what can and can't happen with this sequence. So input filter, lets you determine what can be stored in the sequence. So you can't store values that are not included in the input filter in the sequence. Swap and kill protect protect the sequence from being affected by swap and kill commands used on other sequences. The swap command lowers the masters of other sequences except for the one you activated it on when you use that to effectively go a sequence. The kill command turns off other sequences that are not protected when you apply a kill command on a sequence. Include link last go determines whether or not this sequence will be included um, in the sequence sheet when you have the sequence sheet filter to link last go. Executor time when turned on causes the executor time from your executor time fader over here override all Q fades. So instead of using the built-in Q fade times when you hit go plus, it will use the executor time. This can be useful if you're using it to play back effects or something that you might want to 
have fade in at a different rate at different times, such as when busking. Off when overridden determines whether the sequence will turn off when it is no longer sending any actual values to the fixtures because all the attributes stored in that sequence are being overridden by a different sequence. If you leave this off, the sequence will remain on even when it's not sending values to fixtures, which can be useful if you want other sequences to be on and then when you turn them off, you still have control from this one. If you lock a sequence, you will not be able to make changes to any of the settings or any of the cues, but you can still play it back. The MIB section is very small. The MIB setting lets you change this to enabled or you can never use MIB in the sequence or you can force it to always be early, force it to always be upon go or force it to always be late. When it's enabled, you can change those settings in the queues as normal. MIB mode lets you determine what the default is for that queue. So whenever you store a queue that can MIB lights, they will follow the universal MIB default unless there's one assigned here for the sequence, in which case then it will follow the sequence MIB default. But changing this default, of course, always still lets you change what the queue is doing individually in the sequence, unless this is set to force in some way. Those are all of the sequence settings that you can change for a sequence right here. And while there are certainly lots of other things in the sequence sheet, for instance, with the cues individually, these are the things which affect the sequence overall as a whole. I really hope this helps you. Let me know if there are other similar objects that you would like such detailed overviews on, and I will see you in the next video. Have a great week. Happy programming.